friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 2nd, and it is a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. All right, it's cloudy, but I'll take it. It's uh, it's going to be nice and pleasantly warm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I got some interesting, something interesting to, to talk about today, to tell you about, that uh, I've just become fascinated with. And... You guys know I, I like lighters, I love my Zippo lighters, and uh, I've, I'm sort of interested in history of lighters and matches and things like that. It's something, I've never done a video about this, but I'd like to at some point. You know, just the history of the match is really fascinating, uh, and, and, and rare, relatively recent invention. You know, we don't think about it that way, but yeah, it hasn't been that long that we've been able to just strike a match, so cool stuff to be uh, talked about there for sure. But I've stumbled upon what I think might be the oldest lighter that I've ever seen. And granted, maybe not a pipe lighter, but we will we will discuss this in detail. I am enjoying some Honda Bookshop in this little near up pipe that my wife bought for me during, one of, during our uh, trip out to the West Coast uh, years back. And uh, I love this pipe. I love the memories that it's got with it. And it's a fantastic pipe. If you haven't tried in Europe, I, I recommend them. You know, if, if their style is something that you think you'd like, they're relatively inexpensive and they really, really perform well. And of course, Haunted Bookshop always performs well. So, the story is, I've been watching this show on Netflix and it just popped up. I didn't know I was just looking for something to waste a little bit of time with late one night, and it was it's called Judge D's Mysteries, and I like mysteries and stuff, and it looked interesting based on the little thumbnail thing, so I, I clicked on it, and it's D-E-E, D -E -E, Judge D's Mysteries. Well, it turns out that it's actually about a historical figure uh, from ancient China named uh, D. Renzi, and D is actually spelled D-I, not D-E-E, -E, so don't ask me where the title comes from. And this series is, I thought it was a Netflix series, uh, and it's, you know, it feels like a Netflix series, but it's, it's Chinese, everything is in, uh, I believe, Mandarin Chinese with uh, English subtitles, so if you don't like subtitles, don't watch it. Uh, if you like subtitles, it's incredibly good. The, the stories are really good. They're all set in um, Tang Dynasty China. Uh, so we're talking, you know, like 800 uh, BC, that, that time frame-ish. I'm not a, not a student of Chinese history, so I'm, I hope I'm right about that. Uh, and just, it's almost like... Colombo set in ancient China or something. That's the best way I can describe it. Well written, beautifully produced. The cinematography is really nice. There's CGI in it, but it's not overbearing. It's well done. I really enjoyed this show. And I thought it was a Netflix show, but it turns out it's actually a Chinese production that Netflix got the rights to. So this is like what folks in China are watching when they uh, turn on their TV on Saturday night or whatever. Now, maybe this is just my own ignorance. Well, it is my own ignorance, but I just wasn't expecting this kind of quality. Uh, you know, we, we just, or we're all very self-centered and we think, well, you know, most of us are in the U.S. and Hollywood is here and this is where, you know, all the good stuff is made. And then, yeah, there's some okay stuff from, from England and we don't think much about any other European country, probably because we don't speak the language. Uh, but we kind of have this, we feel pretty good about ourselves when it comes to, to, to television, film, those industries. Well, this blew me away. I mean, this is absolutely, well, frankly, it's better than anything that's on US TV right now. Cause, well, I don't watch anything on US TV right now. Anyway, watch Judge D's Mysteries if you got any interest at all in such things, and you can stand subtitles. Setting that aside... I've noticed as I've, as I've been watching this, this really cool object that many of the characters use. In fact, all of the characters seem to have. And it's a small bamboo tube that they carry in their pocket, or I assume they have pockets, I don't know. 
Uh, it, it's, you know, a tube about yay big, and I'll show you a picture of it in a minute. They take a little cap off of it, and they blow across the top of it, and it ignites into flame. And they'll use it to light, like, incense sticks or fires or candles, or in many cases in, in this show, they use it as a flashlight. You know, they go into a dark room, and they'll take one of these out and blow on it, and they'll use it to, like a torch to be able to see around the room. And... It really struck me that, first off, these were in their pockets, and secondly, that they could just blow on them and they would instantly ignite. So I had to better understand this and find out what this was. So I'll show you a picture here, I hope. Yeah, the, these are some examples, and it's a little hard to see. The, the, the first two, the, the two in the upper left-hand corner there, you can see the line where the cap comes off. So you get an idea of the dimension. And they're about... Uh, maybe six inches long based on what I've seen in the in the show and I'm going to murder the pronunciation of this but I that they are called how Zhuazi, I think uh, that's as close as I'm going to get to it or maybe who Zhuazi. it doesn't translate from what I've been able to learn but I think the word actually well I don't know what the words mean but it's something like fire stick or uh, flame stick or something like that. At least that's the English equivalent of, of what those words would mean. Uh, they're fascinating in their construction, and there's not a lot of information available about them. But from what I've been able to gather, they're made from pounded vines and and grasses and things like that that are that are pounded out. They're soaked, pounded out and left to make almost like a thick paper, uh, sort of a uh, paper felt sort of thing. That is then placed on a piece of thin regular paper, and a, a, a number of things are added to it, including uh, crushed charcoal, uh, rosin, sulfur, and potassium nitrate, which they actually get from... Uh, from bricks and, and stones and stuff like that. Uh, if you if you have a cinder block basement and it's ever been wet, you've seen the the efflorescence, the white crystals that form on the. Well, that's a lot of things, but it's got a lot of potassium nitrate in it. So they just collect that up. That gets sprinkled in there. The whole thing gets rolled very tightly into what looks like a cigar, basically, and that gets shoved into this bamboo tube. And there's a couple of videos on YouTube. You can you can search for them if you want, uh, or maybe if if I remember, I'll put a link below to one of them, where they show people making these. They're all in Chinese. They're very non-decipherable for me. Uh, but there's some interesting things. Like there are some holes in the in the in the cap that can be rotated to line up, which allows a little bit of airflow into the tube. There's also a hole in the bottom that is used to insert like a stick into to push that cigar-like core up because it's going to burn down over time. So once you've got this, you light the end of it, you let it burn a bit, and then you blow it out, which creates a, a, a burning ember, and you put your lid on, and you pop it in your pocket, and you're good to go. And I have no idea how long these things last, but that ember will continue to smolder in there. Uh, presumably safely, unless this is why, this is where the stories of spontaneous combustion began to arise. Sorry, my phone is going off here. Presumably you can safely carry these around. Sorry, my ill-placed Ill spontaneous combustion joke there probably didn't work, but it made me chuckle inside. And you need fire, you take it out, you blow across it, and because the, the base substituents of this are flammable, but it's just got this smoldering ember on it. When you add oxygen, it ignites. I think this might be the earliest example of a portable method of making fire. Because keep in mind, this is 800 years before Christ. These people are walking around with the ability to light fire from their pocket. Really fascinating. Now, I doubt they were using it to light pipes, but they could have. <laughs> The reason I say I doubt that is I think that it's quite a bit before, uh, well, it's definitely before tobacco was known uh, and probably before any form of smoking in China, but maybe there were some herbal things similar to what American Indians would use.
prior to cultivating tobaccos. So, yeah, uh, fascinating stuff, uh, fire sticks. So now I want to make one. As crazy as that sounds, I want to make one of these. I, uh, I won't carry it around burning because I don't want to light myself on fire, but I just want to make one and, and see if it works and, and see if I can, if I can make this work. So I don't think I'm going to be able to find all the traditional components to it. You know, the, uh, oh, by the way, there's also some cotton wool that's included. Uh, forgot about that part. Yeah. So I can get cotton wool and paper, obviously, uh, the different vines and stuff. Maybe I'll just try to use what I can find that kind of looks similar. Cause I don't think there's anything important about the plants in terms of the chemical makeup. I think they're just to provide some structure and some, uh, something that burns and I'm sure that over the years these these evolved from you know fairly simple versions to sort of longer and longer lifetime of that burning ember I don't need that so if I get something close I'll be happy but I'm gonna make myself a I can't remember the word now but a Chinese fire stick uh, <laughs> yeah and if I do that I'll I'll be sure to show you it uh, but it's not going to happen anytime soon because I got a billion other things to do. Anyway, I thought you'd enjoy hearing a little bit about that bit of historical fire starting capability. And if you get a chance to check out Judge D's Mysteries, again, that's D double E, uh, I really recommend it. I, I'm surprised that I'm enjoying a Chinese TV show as much as I am. So today's going to be a not so great Sunday for me because I've got to work. I've got to do my day job work. Um, I got a presentation I've got to give on Monday and I just fell behind during the week and I haven't been able to put the slides together for it. It'll only take me an hour or two, but it's one of these things that I'm just dreading doing. Um, so after I get this video uploaded, I'm going to be making slides. Uh, got a little bit, I'd like to get some work done out in the yard, but it's, it's going to be I don't think it's going to be too hot today, so maybe I can get a little bit of work done this afternoon. We'll, we'll see. And, uh, yeah, my wife came home. My wife uh, came home from Pittsburgh last night, so she's been away for three weeks. It was great to see her. And uh, we had our traditional Saturday night dinner of a salad and a, a frozen cauliflower crust pizza and watched some pointless stuff on television. Some, I think we watched YouTube videos, actually. She... She's really into these YouTube homesteading videos for some reason. I just let her take control of the TV since she's been gone for so long. And uh, watched Swinguli last night, Vincent Price, The Tingler. Can't beat that. And uh, yeah, so another day, another dollar, as the kids say. I'm clearly moving into the realm of rambling, so I will leave you with that. I hope you're all enjoying your weekend. You have a great Sunday and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.